Welcome to a new video about my series about Linux and user space IO drivers. In my last video I have shown you how you can map memory from a UIO driver to user space. And I did this for my PCI TTL32 IO PCI to GPIO card. But the thing is for this or for just accessing the memory behind a PCR, PCI devices bar, I wouldn't have needed a UIO driver. So here on my PCI bus, this device here is my Quancom PCI TTL 32IO card. And when I navigate into sys, um, there under sys bus PCI devices in the folder of my desired device, there is a file called resource. And if I would memory map this file, I would also get access to the memory space of my PCI device. But there is one thing that couldn't be done over the SysFS for a PCI device. And this is interrupt handling. So my PCI device does have a legacy interrupt, which is interrupt five here on this system, or which is mapped interrupt five here in this system. And over SysFS, I can't tell if the interrupt was asserted or not, but UIO offers a mechanism to do so and to also pass the interrupt to user space. And in today's video, I want to show you how to do this. So let me navigate into the folder where I have the sources for my UIO driver. And let's open up the UIO driver itself. But before we're starting writing the driver, maybe first let's take a look how the interrupt works on my PCI TTL32 UIO card. So here again, I'm in the hardware manual of this device and here we can see the register addresses which are available on the device and at offset F9 of bar zero, we have the IRQ generation register. So here over bit zero, I can enable or disable an interrupt. If I want to enable it, I have to write a one to it. If I want to disable it, I have to write a zero to it. And then over a bit one to four, I can set the IRQ source pin. So I can use pin one to 16 to generate the interrupt. And in case, um, yeah, with a rising edge of the selected signal, a flip-flop is set on the cord, which is directly connected to the PCI slots interrupt. And at the end of the interrupt service routine, the internal flip-flop must be cleared with our write instruction to address F9. Okay, so that's how I can use this interrupt. And with UIO drivers, most of the stuff you can do should be done in user space. So setting up the interrupt source bit will be done by our user space application, but the enabling or disabling this bit is something we can do in the driver. And UIO also offers a mechanism to control the interrupt. So to control if it's enabled or disabled. So what I will do here is I will add two functions. The first function is the interrupt handler and the second function is for n or disabling the interrupt. But first I need to define. So let me define the IRQ gen register offset, which is F9 here. Okay, and then I can implement my interrupt control function. So this function has a return has an integer as a return value, zero for success, error code else. The first argument is from the type struct UIO info and it's a pointer to my current UIO um, instance. And the second um, yeah, argument here is a sign 32 bit value, which I will name IRQ enable. And this just tells us if when it's a one, we want to enable interrupts. If it's a zero, we want to disable the interrupt. So then I only want to manipulate this bit zero here. The other bits I don't want to touch. Therefore, it's necessary for me to first read in the state of the register, clear this bit, and then set it depending on this IRQ enable variable. So let's do this. Therefore, I will use the UI, the U, um, the IO read function and as an argument I have to pass in the pointer from which I want to read and this pointer is stored at mem0 internal address and I have to add the offset 
then I can clear bit number one and then I can or value with IRQ enable and one. And then here in this value register, the IRQ enable bit is set depending on the IRQ enable variable. So next thing I can do is I can write out this register and I want to write it out to bar zero um, plus the offset of IRQ again. And last but not least, let's print something out so we know the interrupt has been n or disabled. So, and now I don't want, so um, this UAO infostruct has a device field in it, but I want to see the um, PCI device instead. And theref th therefore I have to get the PCI address of my device. And the way I'm getting this is, um, so the info struct, your info has a field URO def, and this has a field with the device. And the device has a parent pointer, which is the pointer to my PCI device here. Okay, and the message I want to print out, IRQ is enabled or disabled now. And therefore, if IRQ again, then it's enabled else disabled okay and then i will return zero to indicate everything worked fine cool so much for the control function now let's implement the interrupt handler mirq return t is the type here um pci ttl32 IO IRQ handler is a name I will assign. This function has the following arguments. The first one is once again a pointer to my UAO info instance, and the second one is the interrupt number. Okay, and all I will do here basically is I will call PCI TTL32 IO. IRQ control and I will disable the interrupt and then I will print out a message. Um, IRQ, um, yeah, was asserted. Okay, and then I will return IRQ handled to signalize yeah, I've handled the RQ successfully. Okay, so last but not least, I have to add the interrupt functions to my UIO info struct. So let's do it down here. Add interrupt functions. So the first field I have to fill is the RQ, and here I have to pass in the interrupt number. And I can get this over my PCI device, which because the struct PCI def has a field RQ, which will give us the interrupt number, which is 15 in this case. Then I will set the um, interrupt handler I want to use, and this is PCI TTL32 IO RQ handler. And last but not least, I want to pass a pointer to my interrupt control function. And this is control here. Okay, and that should be it. So let me try to compile it and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, this should be IO read eight. And I think this is called RQ handler and not just handler. Mm -hmm. Or RQ return and... Uh, Okay, here I've, <laughs> the arguments are in the wrong way. Okay, so first I O read, let me fix that. So of course here it's I O read eight because I want to do an eight bit read. And here I have to switch the arguments. Okay, and now I should be able to compile it. Let's see. 
Yeah, now it's looking good. Cool, and now let's check how we can actually access this interrupt. Therefore, I will copy my um, UIO memaccess example and create a new file level called UIO under IOQ.C. And then let's open it up. So here I have a uint 32 bit value, which is called well. And if I want to enable interrupt, so maybe let's clear this stuff here, so we don't need it. So let's enable the IRQ here. Therefore, I will set this value to one. And then I will write to the def uio zero file and I will write this value in here and the amount of bytes I'm writing is size of well. And by doing so, I'm enabling the interrupt. If I would write a zero here, I would disable the interrupt. And now let's wait for an interrupt. And the way we can do this is I can read from my file descriptor. I want to save the value here in this well, um, I, um, yeah, variable once again, and I will read four bytes. And then this read will only terminate when the interrupt occurs. So in my case, when I'm pressing this or one of these buttons here. And the value, which is then stored in val, is IRQ already, um, RQ already uh, or was already d times asserted. So the value we're getting here in val is the how much times the RQ was already asserted. And of course, before doing the read, I could do a poll to check if there is anything to read if I don't want to block my program here. But I actually want to block my program. And then th there is one thing left, so we have to set up which pin we want to use. Let's say I want to use this pin down here. So in this case, here over pointer bar zero, I can access the memory space of bar zero. And what I will do here is I will add the offset nullix f9 again. And I will set this to uh, two or two shifted by one. And therefore I've assigned, or yeah, I've, I'm telling the program I will use, um, yeah, I open number two. So this pin here as an interrupt source. Okay, cool. So let me try to compile the program and run it. Okay. Oh, first of course I have to load my driver. So let me open up Tmox first. Here, let's display the kernels lock. Here, um, first I have to mob prop the UIO um, driver and then I can load my PCI tdl 32 io driver. Okay, so the driver is now loaded. We have the def UIO zero device file available here. And now if I run a.out, we see the interrupt is now enabled and now it's waiting for the interrupt. And now if I press this button here, haha, we see the IRQ was asserted and I actually disabled the IRQ too. And here I get the message IRQ was already one time asserted. And if I run the program a second time and press the button, I can see now here we're reading a two, now a three. So yeah, you actually see it's working quite fine. Okay, cool. So that's how to use interrupts in a UIO driver. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.